I welcome you all in this course on mechanical measurement systems. Today we will start with the temperature measurement. So, when we talk about the temperature measurement, uh, temperature and type of temperature sensors, they immediately come into our mind. So, today the topics we will be covering, first of all, we will have a brief discussion about the temperature and then discussions about temperature sensors. Now, when we talk about temperature, <laughs> that immediately zeroth law of thermodynamics comes into the picture. And zeroth law says <laughs> that if body A is in thermal equilibrium with the body B, which itself is in thermal equilibrium with body C, that A and C are in thermal equilibrium. It, it does not speak about temperature, right? Temperature is <laughs> derivative of the concept of te temperature is derivative of the zeroth law of thermodynamics and he, he, from here the concept of temperature measurement starts. Zeroth law is the latest law of thermodynamics. Actually, it is start with the, <coughs> the, the laws of thermodynamics started with the fact when we converted heat into the work or developed the heat engine in uh, 17th or late 17th and uh, 18th century. And when we developed the heat engine, <laughs> which <laughs> resulted in uh, industrial revolution and it was a big achievement, we could because we could any amount of heat could be converted into the useful work using a steam engine. Then came the efficiency, how to improve the efficiency of the steam engine, right? So <laughs> for improving the efficiency, first of all, it was explored, can we convert 100 percent heat into the 100 percent of work? Many experiments were conducted, a number of experiments conducted for a very long time and ultimately it was concluded <laughs> that all heat cannot be work converted into the useful work that is that is derived from the second law of thermodynamics, right? No engine can have uh, 100 percent efficiency. Till, they, till that time there is nothing, there was nothing like thermodynamics. The thermodynamics was coined in 1849 by Kel Lord Kelvin. Lord Kelvin was a person who coined this word in 1848, not 1849, I think 1848, 1848. He coined this word thermodynamics. <coughs> Before that, there was consistent efforts to convert entire heat into the work which was not, which was ultimately second law says that it is not possible. Then can we convert heat into the work? This has come from the first law of thermodynamics that heat and work are mutually convertible. Cyclic integral of heat transfer in a cyclic or cyclic integral of work transfer are equal in a cyclic process, right? In a cyclic thermodynamic process the cyclic integral of heat is equal to cyclic integral of work. And derivative of the first law is internal energy, which is a function of temperature. So, in thermal systems, <laughs> the measurement of temperature is very important. And for all thermal system, if we take any heat exchanger or we take any turbines or any compressor, any machine which is, which is based on uh, which is which is a thermal system which we call a thermal system the temperature measurement is a very important part in fact energy transmission in thermal systems either say we have to have temperature profile and as far as the mass flow rate there are two things essential things which are required to be measured other things can be determined for example work can be determined uh, heat transfer can be determined change in internal energy can be determined, but we need to have these two values. So, mass flow rate or the flow measurement I have already discussed in the previous lecture and today I shall start with temperature measurement. Now, regarding temperature measurement, we use an instrument which is known as thermometer. And most popular thermometer is liquid in glass type of thermometer and this thermometer we have amply discussed. 
liquid in glass type of thermometer here it is marked x and there is a bulb which is a primary sensing element which comes into the contact with the measurement. Now, <coughs> these marks are not arbitrary in a thermometer, there is a temperature scale. So, for temperature scale earlier it was a degree centigrade scale, melting ice was a reference temperature and temperature was considered to be varying linear T is equal to A x plus B. So, <coughs> x is equal to 0, the temperature was considered as 0 degree centigrade in degree centigrade scale and boiling point of water was taken another reference point because there are two unknowns and these unknowns were determined. Before degree centigrade temperature there was a Fahrenheit temperature Fahrenheit scale also. In Fahrenheit scale the, the boiling temperature of water oh sorry the, the freezing temperature of water is 32 degree Fahrenheit right and boiling temperature of water is 180 degree Fahrenheit sorry 212 not 180. 212 degree Fahrenheit. So, this degree centigrade scale followed the because it is an MKS system, right? Right now we have SI system. Now, after this scale, another scale came which is now being used, it is a based on the triple point of water, and this scale has simple reference point that is 0 0.01 degree centigrade, that is triple point of water and x is equal to 273.16 because 0 degree centigrade is equal to 273.15 uh, Kelvin. So, it is 273.16 divided by uh, sorry this is T. this is x by x o, x by x o multiplied by this is equal to t. So, it was a it has a it has a, a single reference point and nowadays this uh, scale is in fashion for different temperature ranges we take different triple points of different substances maybe a gas or a liquid metal depending upon the temperature range. Now, <coughs> for For the measurement of temperature, because temperature measurement is a very challenging job, because it varies from minus 273 degree centigrade to it can go up to 4000, 3000 degree centigrade. When we are <laughs> dealing in the cryogenic area, in cryogenics it starts from 1 minus 150 degree centigrade, right. This is required in space applications. This is also uh, required in space applications or nuclear power plants when the temperature reaching up to 3000 degrees centigrade. So, very wide range of temperature has to be made, A very wide range of temperature measurement has to be made. That is why the job of temperature measurement is very typical in any system. Because with the help of single device we cannot cover or with this help of single technology in fact we cannot cover the entire range of temperature measurement, it cannot be covered. So, we have to for different applications for a for variety of applications, we have to go for different type of measurement systems. Now, <coughs> I, we will take those measurement systems one by one. Now, liquid and glass thermometer we have amply discussed in, in earlier lectures. So, this is one of the very old and still in fashion uh, measuring device that is liquid in glass type of thermometer. Now, another device which is also used for the purpose of control that is uh, bimetallic thermometer, bimetallic thermometer. In it works on the principle of thermal expansion. So, there are two strips in biometallic thermometer as it is clear from the name itself and they are pasted on each other. Now, what happens if there is a change in temperature, the thermal expansion of this strip is substantially different from thermal expansion of this strip and they are pasted on each other. 
in that case what is going to happen if this has higher thermal expansion these strips will get curved due to thermal expansion or due to change in temperature right and as the shape of the or, or the curvature of the strip has changed this can very well be related with the temperature difference and this is also used for control purpose it is used in refrigerators also in some of the refrigerators also for contact and non contact type of device because if temperature exceeds certain limit it will it will deform it will change a curvature will be developed and some contact will be established or contact can be broken depending upon the requirement so this biometric strip can also be used as a control device another type of thermometers uh, is fill type of thermometer fill type now the fill type may be of gas type or liquid type of thermometer or uh, uh, vapor type of thermometer now there is a difference between gas and vapor i must tell you here gas and vapor gas follow the ideal gas equations vapors do not follow the ideal gas equation right all the vapors if they are at very low pressure if the pressure is less than 10 kilo pascal they are considered as a gas for example <coughs> mixture of uh, water vapor in uh, air so air present in water vapor is considered as a gas it is treated as a gas or the temperature of the air temperature is greater than 2 times critical temperature for such a high temperature the <coughs> vapor is considered as a gas for this reason in the steam turbines the steam is not considered as a gas we don't use pv is equal to rt for the analysis of steam turbine as in the case of gas turbine gas turbine we use pv is equal to rt because in gas turbines we use gases but in steam turbine where high pressure steam is used but temperature is not sufficiently high that is why we don't use pv is equal to rt and for this reason the steam table is used thermal physical properties of steam is taken from steam table so in a gas filled thermometer the working principle is very simple there is a bulb right it is filled filled with some fluid maybe a liquid or a gas and it is connected to bored on tube as i explained you earlier it is a curved tube right when this bordon tube is connected with this right when this in this bulb it is closed so when in this bulb there is a energy addition by virtue of temperature difference or it comes into contact with the measurement the liquid expands or the fluid expands and this fluid causes the extension of the free end of the bordon tube in this direction and then we can have uh, and there is a mechanism which transmit this motion on the dial with the help of an indicator this is the basic working principle of a fill type of thermometer <laughs> and filling can be uh, any liquid vapor or any gas but there are certain <coughs> uh, uh, disadvantages also in this system because here the temperature is different this is the temperature of room temperature here the temperature of measure suppose measurement temperature is 100 degree centigrade room temperature is 25 degree centigrade this may cause error in the measurement if there is too much change in elevation this will also cause error in measurement but grossly this is a very good and reliable instrument and it is i mean used in many process industries it is very reliable i mean these all these known errors can be compensated i mean we can ha always have compensation for these errors but still this is a very <laughs> reliable instrument for temperature measurement but the most popular instrument which is used for or a sensor which is used for temperature measurement is thermocouple
Now, <coughs> thermocouple works on a <coughs> on, on, the, on the principles of physics. That is, <coughs> Seebeck effect. Now, Seebeck effect is all about the fact that when there is a temperature difference, if there is a joint of two dissimilar materials, suppose they are A and B, and they are kept at different temperatures, A and B, 1 and 2. 1 and 2 are different. Suppose this is boiling water and this is melting ice, so 100 and 0. Some EMF will be generated and this EMF will, I mean some EMF will be generated. Now, if we are able to measure this EMF, we can find the unknown voltage. For known vo temperature, suppose this is 100, this is 0 degree centigrade, now this is 90, this is 0 degree centigrade. Now, <coughs> we can have characteristic curve for this thermocouple and we will be getting different EMF for these temperatures. Now, for a known <laughs> or a measured EMF, we can immediately find the unknown temperature. So, this is the basic principle or the working principle of a thermocouple. So, thermocouple is a combination of wires. So, there are two wires of dissimilar material, right? And when these dissimilar junctions or junctions of dissimilar material are kept at a different temperatures, the EMF is generated. Now, in addition to this, there is another effect which is known as Peltier effect. Now, Peltier effect is opposite to the Seebeck effect. Now, Peltier effect says <coughs> when current is passed through a junction of dissimilar material, if we pass a current through a junction of dissimilar material, either heating or cooling of this junction will take place. So, it is opposite to the uh, Seebeck effect. Seebeck effect says if junction is placed at two different temperatures, then EMF will be generated. Here, when the current is passed through a junction of a material, right, either heating or cooling of this junction will take place. So, it is just opposite of uh, Seebeck effect. Another effect which is very important is Thomson effect. Thomson effect. Now, Thomson effect speaks about <coughs> the development of EMF due to temperature gradient in a <coughs> conductor. Suppose there is a wire, conducting wire and it is at a different temperature T1 and T2, two ends. In that case also EMF will be generated. We do not require, I mean dissimilar materials in the same conductor or a homo conductor of <coughs> homogeneous or the material is homogeneous in nature and then if there is a temperature gradient in the wire, the uh, EMF will be generated. Now, advantage of thermocouples is they are very inexpensive. They are inexpensive. They may cost you 5 rupees per meter and they are expensive as well. They may cost you 5000 rupees per meter also. So, they are, they are not absolutely inexpensive at all. The cost may vary from 5 rupees or 3 rupees per meter depending upon <laughs> the requirement and sophistication is required and it can go, go up to 5000 rupees per meter or 10000 rupees per meter. <coughs> but the, the, the beauty of these thermocouples is you can use thermocouples for the temperature measurement for a span of let us say uh, 1500 degree centigrade. You can comfortably use thermocouples from minus 200 to 1300 degree centigrade. Though the type of thermocouples will change, the th type of junction will change, but this temperature range can be covered by thermocouples. That is why they are very popular in temperature measurement. And second, at the last point in the favor of thermocouples is the time response is very fast because a thermocouple tip can be made as small as 0 0.25 mm or less than that. So, in 2.25 mm tip, there are two wires connected with each other. 
and the diameter of this sheet is 0.25 mm. And these thermocouples have very high response time, so a very low response time. They are, I mean, the response is very good, so they have very low response time. If you compare with the liquid in uh, glass type of thermometer or burp type of thermometer or any other temperature measuring device, the thermocouple we can manage, <laughs> we can manage very high response of thermocouples. So that is also one of the advantage of. Uh, advantages of using thermocouples in temperature measurement applications. Now, there are different classes of thermocouples we have because, because we have to cover a wide range. So, there are different classes of thermocouples and we will start with <coughs> home body class or base metal cover thermocouple, base metal or home body class and in this class the thermocouples are Uh, T, J, K, N, E, these type of thermocouples. Another class of the thermocouples is <coughs> uh, rare metal class. In rare metal class, they are costly thermocouples and they are BSR, B, S, and R thermocouples. Now, these thermocouples have different compositions. Let us start with T. We will shift a little. So, let us start with T. T type thermocouple. This thermocouple is very popular. <coughs> it is made of copper and constant end. Copper, one wire is copper wire, pure copper wire. Another wire is copper constant end. It is cupro nickel alloy, copper constant end. This is capital C. It is known as commercially, it is known as T type of thermocouple. <coughs> we call it copper constant end thermocouple. So, okay, if you want to go to the market and purchase this type of thermocouple, you have to write T type T type of thermocouple. Right? And this thermocouple can measure temperature in a range of minus 270 to 370 degrees centigrade. So, this is the temperature range for this thermocouple and <laughs> sensitivity of the thermocouple is 15 to 60 micro volt per degree centigrade. The sensitivity is change in the output, change in the output in millivolts for per second change in the temperature. So, it is 15 to 60 because this <laughs> EMF and this relation temperature change and EMF relation is not linear, it is non-linear. So, which you, range you are operating it is important. For low temperatures, this is the sensitivity, this is the sensitivity for higher temperatures. Similarly, for J type of thermocouples, which is second popular thermocouple, it is J type. It is instead of a copper here, the iron is used. So, iron constant in thermocouple. It is again cupronickel alloy, constant end is cupronickel alloy, and the temperature range is minus 210 to 760 degrees centigrade. If you refer different authors, you will find different ranges. Even manufacturers have given different ranges for temperature measurement of thermocouples, but what I am depicting here is the same range. If you have to measure up to 700 or you can go up to 800 also with J type of thermocouples, but not beyond 800. Right? And if you are uh, operating at the fake end of the range or fake end of the range, definitely the performance will not be as expected by the thermocouple. Right? And here <coughs> 45 to 57 micro volt per degree centigrade. This is the sensitivity of this thermocouple. Now, the next one is K type of thermocouple, K type. Now, K type of thermocouple is a combination of chromel and alumel. Now, chromel is an alloy. So, chromase is an alloy and alumel is also alloy. This is chromel is nickel chromium alloy, nickel chromium alloy and alumel is
nickel aluminum alloy. So, both are alloys. Now, this thermocouple K type of thermocouple, it can go up to minus 270 to 1260 degree centigrade, quite high. It can go up to 260 degree centigrade and the, the sensitivity of this thermocouple is 45 to 55 microvolt per degree centigrade. So, if you want to measure up to 1200 or even 1300 degree centigrade, we can comfortably use K type of thermocouples. So, for high temperature applications, because most of the thermal applications are in this range. So, most of the for high temperature applications, K type of thermocouples are used. So, definitely these thermocouples are costlier than these two type of thermocouples. Now, after K type of thermocouples, there is an E type of thermocouple, E and N. Now, E type of thermocouple, it is chromel and constant N. So, chromel, it is chromel and constant N, chromel and constant N thermocouple. Now, this E type of thermocouple can have minus 270 to 870 degree centigrade and the sensitivity is 60, approximately 60 microvolts per degree centigrade. So, it is relatively stable, it is relatively linear. Now, N type of thermocouple, it has nicrosyl, nicrosyl, it is nickel 14.2 percent, chromium 1.4 percent and nicel. Nicrosyl and nicyl. So, nickel chromium and this is nicyl is nickel 4.4 percent, silica 0 0.1 percent and magnesium. So, N type of thermocouple is used for, is often used for as a reference uh, thermocouple for uh, calibration. For N type of thermocouple, it is minus 272. 390 degree centigrade, right? And for end the type of thermocouple, it is again 60 microvolt per degree centigrade. This is J type also is 270. This is also 270. There is nothing like 210. So it is all most of the thermocouples are starting from minus 270. So N type is minus 270 to 390, and sensitivity is 60 microvolt per degree centigrade. So, this range of minus 272 to 390 is used for, so N type of thermocouples are quite stable and normally they are used for as a reference temperature for temperature measurement. Now, another type of thermocouple, they are a rare metal type of thermocouples. In rare metal type of thermocouples, Uh, there are R, S and B. So, R type of thermocouple. So, here platinum is used in rare uh, metal type of uh, or precious metal type of thermocouples. The platinum is used. So, here the R type of thermocouples has platinum 87 percent and platinum rhodium alloy of this is 13 percent. This is the combination that is why it is costly, they are quite costly. So, R type of thermocouple and the temperature range is minus 15 to 1500 degree centigrade. This is the temperature range and sensitivity varies from 0 to 10, oh sorry 5 to 10 not 0, 5 to 10 microvolt per degree centigrade. It can go up to 12 also, 12 or 13 also. And normally, we take around 6 to 7 microvolts per degree centigrade, the sensitivity of R type of thermocouples. Next is S type of thermocouples. Now, in S type of thermocouples, it is also platinum based alloy. It is platinum 90 percent, 
when the amount of platinum has increased and platinum rhodium is 10 percent. And S type of thermocouple also it is same range and sensitivity is also same. The next is the last one is B type and B type of thermocouple it is platinum rhodium 30 percent and rhodium is 6 percent right and this also the range is 0 to 1700 degree centigrade and the sensitivity is same no so yes sensitivity is same in addition to these there are other number of exotic thermocouples i mean there is a long list and with the help of thermocouples nowadays we can measure up to 2200 degree centigrade and efforts are still on to go for because beyond that temperature we will have to go for indirect temperature measurement or non contact type of temperature measurement technique which is not considered to be very very liable reliable so after this material of thermocouple we will discuss about the different combinations or different type of thermocouples for example grounded thermocouple there is the two terms grounded and ungrounded and bare and sheet thermocouple. Now, bare thermocouple are simple wires uh, they are connected and ends are fused and they are used for temperature measurement. But sometimes protection is required from oxidizing, oxidize, oxidizing or reducing environment or for example, I am temp measuring temperature of water. If I put just bare wire type of thermocouple, the short circuiting earlier short circuiting will short circuiting will take place and I will not get the appropriate reading. Right? So, <coughs> these wires have to be insulated these, the insulation has to be provided on these wires and sometimes insulation is not sufficient because if even if you provide the insulation temperature may not be correct in hostile environment. So, entire thermocouple has to be covered. So, sheathing is done. Now, <laughs> for sheath there are two wires thermocouple wires the, the tip of thermocouple and wire is coated with magnesium oxide that is MgO 99.7 percent right and entire system is put under a sheet. It is a long thin tube I mean it, it if you look from outside it appears to a wire because diameter of this sheet this varies from 0.25 mm to 5 mm or more than that. So, it can be as small as 0.25 mm with all this arrangement. When this tip is in contact with the with the surface of the ship uh, or the tip of the sheath, then it is known as grounded thermocouple. The response of the grounded thermocouple is faster. When it is ungrounded thermocouple, then response is not that faster, right. So, we can <laughs> further classifies, classify thermocouple as a exposed thermocouples, exposed, grounded, unround grounded or bare I have already written is both, both are the same thing, same, same, same meaning, meaning the same exposed or bare and sheet thermocouple, right and sheet it, it comes for, from different material, it is made from different materials, it can be of SS 316, it can be of SS 304 and it can be of inconal. So, inconal is an alloy. So, inconal is an alloy. So, inconal is an alloy and it is used for highly corrosive environment. If the environment is not corrosive, then we can go for SS 304 or SS <laughs> uh, 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 316, but still if you compare these two, this SS 316 has higher, uh, if you compare these two, has higher uh, corrosive resistance. 
This is all for today. In the next class, we will continue the discussions on thermocouples.